Are you a broke photographer? Not making much money in this industry? Towards the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get a baseline on what you should be charging minimum. Hey folks, Jeff McLean here. So the other day I get an email from someone that says, hey Jeff, I'm reaching out because I think I'm getting taken advantage of. And this person, Jimmy, um, begins to tell me the story about uh, how he has been working for this big studio in a big city here in the United States and how he's been getting paid $12.75 an hour, right? And which is very low for the, the skills that I know that Jimmy has. Jimmy knows how to light things with strobes. Uh, he knows how to work with grip equipment. He knows, he knows how to set, you know, a 20 foot silk on, um, you know, a butterfly overhead on high rollers and it not kill everybody. You know, he knows how to work Adobe Photoshop really well. He knows Capture One. He knows Lightroom. He knows how to operate cameras. Basically, he's a very valuable person, particularly as an assistant. And that's what he's doing. He's working at the studio as a photo assistant. And somehow he's gotten in the position of getting paid $12. Dollars and seventy-five cents per hour, uh, which is really low for the market area that he's in and for the kinds of skills he's bringing to the table. And so I had three veins of rage roll through me when he's telling me this story. The first vein of rage I had <laughs> was really for Jimmy in that like, hey, that dude, how did you take such a low wage for something that you should be getting paid quite a bit more to do? The, you know, average day rate in that particular area is more like three to four hundred dollars a day. And, you know, he's doing, you know, these 12 to 16 hour days, he tells me. And in some cases, this particular photographer has told him at the end of shoots that there's no budget. They're not even going to pay him. Um, so the first vein of rage I have was for Jimmy, like Jimmy, why are you putting yourself in this situation? You know, why are you, he's, he's what I would call the eager beaver. He's so excited about being on set and particularly with this client, um, this particular photographer who's working for clients that he hopes to aspire towards, um, the kinds of clients that he wants. And so he's eager beaver wants to get out there and, uh, and, you know, show what he's worth, but he immediately comes in and he anchors himself really low by accepting this incredibly low wage. Okay, so the second vein of rage I have is for that photographer. That photographer should know better. That photographer's been around for a long time. The photographer who will go unnamed so I don't get sued should know better than to be anchoring his assistance at this paltry wage, right? Like you could not have any skills at all and get a job uh, in food service you know, as an entry level job with no skills and be making more money conceivably at some of these fast food, res fast food restaurants uh, and, you know, at a higher rate than what he gets paid as a skilled assistant who, you know, went to school and uh, understands a lot of different, you know, software programs and basically knows how this whole thing works, can show up and help somebody out and be a valuable asset. So, you know, then the next thought on my mind is, well, well, maybe Jimmy sucks. You know, maybe Jimmy's really not that great. Now, granted, I have worked with Jimmy and he doesn't suck. He's good. He's on top of it. Um, he knows, you know, what is going on. He's paying attention. So I, I find that a little hard to believe unless he's changed, of course, and he's just, you know, not a worthy assistant anymore. You know, so then I'm thinking, well, you know, this photographers, you know, must be just uh, coming in low on everybody and anchoring all his assistants really low. You know, he's he's paying whatever, 150 bucks a day for, for somebody like Jimmy. No doubt he's probably marking Jimmy up to four or $500 a day on his invoice to his client and making more money off of Jimmy than he's needing to even pay Jimmy. That's called the race to the bottom. And it's perpetuating this race to the bottom. If photographers are going out there and they're not even paying the people that are helping them on the shoot, the wage that is normal for that particular role, right? And so not only should photographers understand what their worth is and what they, they should be charging right out of the gates, you know, granted, Jimmy probably can't command a first assistant 
day rate um, because he's 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 new, right? He's green to this this whole scene, and uh, he's got the skills, the entry level skills, but he's still green and he's the experience. So you know he should really be trying to anchor a little high, and then that photographer could maybe come in a little bit lower than that. Well, you're green, you know. Like, how about you do your first year or two at this lower rate, but twelve seventy five an hour? That's like for twelve hour days, maybe. He's told me sometimes longer than that. That's, you know, pretty paltry. Um, and honestly, I think that photographer is kind of a dick. So, you know, to he's just perpetuating the one thing that photographers don't want, which is this race to the bottom, right? We're all trying to, um, you know, figure out how to make a living in this world and, and how to, you know, do well. We want to be able to do more than just see our images on somebody's Instagram. We we want to be able to pay our bills. We want to be able to pay our mortgage or our car payment and, you know, maybe consider having a family, things like that. And you can't do that on, you know, these really, really low wages. Okay. The third vein of rage I had was for the sort of race to the bottom photographers as a whole. You know, these what I guess we could call them the nano influencers, the people who are the eager beavers, so desperate to get their images out there on somebody else's Instagram, some other business's Instagram to, to I guess, give them those kudos feelings that they, you know, uh, it's giving them a sense of purpose that, that their imagery has now been used by some company. They must be a good photographer now, right? Um, and it's to those photographers who are the eager beavers desperate to their give their images away to companies that they should be paying very close attention to the next part of this video when I demonstrate to you what you probably should be paid. So not to disparage the influencer game, right? There's some influencers out there that are, are doing great. They're making lots of money. I'm talking about those, you know, Instagram stars and all that. You know, YouTube's kind of its own sort of thing, right, with, with those folks. But I'm talking about those photographers who, you know, are, are willing to market other companies' products uh, or services or what have you on their own Instagram, or they are providing, you know, these images to, to both. They're putting it on in their own audience, but then they're also giving it to, to that company. And they're, they're really just eager beavers excited to see that sort of thing. And they're probably not getting paid very well. In some cases, some of them are getting paid very well. And what's great is there's this new kind of website out there at the time of this video um, called <laughs> You Pay Me. F U pay me, right? And F Y P M. And um, the the owner of this site is an influencer, and they uh, have basically set this thing up so, as an aggregator to aggregate all of the you know sort of intel out there. She, she I think it's a she. She has asked uh, you know all the other influencers, hey, you know, like what did you get paid for such and such campaign? Um, she, you know, looks at how many followers they have, how much engagement they have. So you can kind of see if you're somebody who's an influencer and you um, are going, you're being approached by a particular company. If you have a particular amount of followers and a particular kind of engagement um, at a particular level, you can kind of see where you fall in what you should be charging. I think that's a great service. I think there needs to be more open communication between photographers and creatives about uh, the kinds of fees that they're able to get. You know, there's there's kind of a base minimum of what you should charge, which is based upon, well, how much money do you need to live and how much money do you need to thrive, right? And then there's like profit on top of that. And that profit margin is often determined by the overall value of the photo shoot to the end client. You know, a photo shoot that's going to be printed on um, billboards, you know, uh, let's say, 2000 billboards around the world is going to have a much higher usage value than if it's just being printed in some sort of local rag in a town of, you know, 15,000 people. So it's a different kind of different amount of eyes that are seeing that work. And so therefore it has a much different value. Okay. But the first stop in your game, whether you're a photo assistant trying to get into the industry or whether you're a photographer trying to figure out how much to charge the first stop is to run a couple of budgets, not just a personal budget, but you need to apply that personal budget, what you need to get paid into an overall business budget because the business is the thing that's paying you, but you need to keep the business alive. So we're going to take a look at here at a couple of calculators. Um, I basically spotted these. Um, this is props to the American Society of Media Photographers Best Business Practices book. Okay, um, that's where I spotted these calculators. And so because I know Excel well enough to, you know, 
create a spreadsheet and apply functions. I created my own um, custom one based upon kind of like what I read in this book. Okay, so there are two parts to this. One spreadsheet that you fill out is your personal expenses, okay? And that's this one here. And I'll zoom in a bit so we can kind of get a better view of it. Do, 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 do. And this sort of thing is customizable. You can kind of change things around and type in your own deal. You know, maybe you have kids and you want to be able to like plug in some, some rows here that account for, say, their 529 savings um, and, you know, how much extra money you spend on food for them or clothing for them or furniture for their room, that sort of stuff. So this sort of thing shouldn't be seen as um, just a spreadsheet for right now, but it should be for right now. But also it gives you the ability, like if you make a dupe of it and you think about your future, you can plug in future numbers. You can say, well, what would this look like if I wanted to like own my own home and buy a new car and have a car payment? What would this look like if I wanted kids? Um, this kind of gives you an idea as to how much money you're going to need to make in order to pay yourself, right? So the first thing we plug in, let's just say your particular rent is $1,600 a month. You and your significant other um, share a place, and let's say it's $1,600 a month. That's on the high end, right? But let's just say that's the case. You're living in some city. You pay $1,600 a month, um, and uh, maybe you yourself pay that. Maybe you're splitting with somebody and you pay $3,200 a month, which, of course, would be very high. Um, that would be like New York or San Francisco or something like that. Okay, so then you think about utilities, okay? And you think, well, you know, maybe your utilities are about 120 months. So these are set up, you can see that there are bold cells here, and these bold cells are where you would plug in that figure, and then it does the calculation to tell you weekly as well as yearly, just so you can kind of see what's being spent weekly and yearly um, on that figure. Home appliance, you'd figure maybe you need to buy a blender, right? Um, what 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 do you think yearly you would, just kind of guesstimating, right? So maybe you'd think like, oh, 50 dollars yearly maybe some some appliance um maybe the the place you're living already has a washer and dryer that kind of thing you don't need to purchase that home repair you think like this is basic stuff this is like the the faucet on the kitchen sink starts to leak now some people call their landlord in for that um but homeowners and and other people you know like myself uh will just fix it because it's not that hard to do and it's not that expensive. But let's say, you know, basic stuff that doesn't require calling in a landlord um, or if you own your own home, um, we're talking, you know, home repair. Let's say, let's say $40 a year, okay, for something like leaky faucet. Furniture, you know, what do you think you would spend yearly on some new couch or coffee table or maybe you need a desk or, or something? Um, you know, th this figure would probably be like 250 a year, let's say. Okay. And of course, these numbers, you should change every six months or so because uh, you'll actually, if you're keeping track and doing some bookkeeping, you will have real figures to work with that you can plug in here if you're keeping track of things. Okay, so medical insurance. Let's say you're getting something, um, you know, you're getting something off of the uh, affordable care deal, or maybe if your employer provides it, then you wouldn't need to plug anything. Maybe you have a part-time job that uh, provides some sort of medical insurance, or I guess it would be a full-time job, 30 hours. Medical insurance, let's say three hundred dollars a month. Let's say you're you're paid, and you know, and if you have dental insurance, let's say I don't know, maybe it's probably like thirty five dollars a month, right? And then maybe you decide it's smart to have like some sort of health savings account, and you can probably plug you know fifty dollars a week into that, okay? And then you want to have like some savings. You need some sort of emergency fund. So let's say you're putting hundred dollars a month into that, and you're going to be saving twelve hundred dollars a year, okay? And then you have an IRA that you want to fund. And let's say the most you can afford on that is $100 a month too, okay? And, you know, let's be real. Like not everybody can, can dump $6,000 into their Roth, but, uh, but some people can. not And so these numbers, of course, will be like what you're going to be pumping in there. So, you know, I'm trying to make this uh, accessible to, you know, you can kind of see. Uh, groceries. This is again where where it's a good idea for you to keep your grocery receipts and and kind of get start to get an idea month to month on average what you spend. You know, take six months of receipts, sit down, separate them into piles per month. You know, divide it by six after you add each up uh, add each month, and you'll have your average of what you spend on groceries. So let's say you know you're spending 150. 
like $600 a month on groceries, let's say. Well, you got to build some fun in there too. Weekly, what do you think, you know, you spend going out? Let's be real. Some young folks probably spend $100 a week going out. Okay. And then there's travel. Well, what if you want to save personally for um, being able to take some sort of trip, like a once a year vacation, right? So let's say, uh, what would 100 be? Well, that would be, you know, 4,800. That would be a, a nice vacation, right? So maybe let's go 25 a week, $1,200 you know, $600 airfare. If, I mean, if you're going international, that's your, that's your flight right there. So maybe $50. Okay. That's more like it. Now you got a flight and maybe like a week someplace of, um, you know, 1200 bucks. All right. So it's telling you that monthly you need to be pulling in 3683. Okay. And this is where we then bounce over to our base fee calculator. Okay. And the base fee calculator is based upon more about your business, right? So this is where you would need to, you know, know what, what sorts of transactions are happening with your business specifically. And this is why it's important to have your own business account separate from your personal checking, because you can track this sort of thing. I like to use, um, you know, you can use Quicken, but I like to use QuickBooks and it, it pumps out these numbers for me. I can see what, what do I actually spend on, on certain things in uh, my business, right? So now at some point, maybe you'll get to the point where you can have an assistant, a full-time assistant on payroll. That would be cool if you can do that. Um, not all photographers do that. Many just have freelancers, right? So let's see, you know, legal, yearly, you know, this would be like if you're hiring an attorney to look over your contracts, that kind of thing. But accounting, I can just look at my invoice from my accountant and see, oh, you know, for my taxes, this is what she charged me, $600 for the year, right? And then I go down and maybe if I have a studio space, I would plug in these figures. This would be like a facilities expenses, right? And so, you know, I, I have a small, uh, very tiny like storage kind of studio space that I use for certain things. And that's 150 a month. I don't pay electric telephone. Well, for my cell phone, right? That's different. So let's say hundred dollars and I don't pay heat or maintenance or anything like that on this particular space that I use for, for things, um, office equipment. Okay. So this would be like your printer. Um, you know, you need a three hole punch for, a, you know, your stapler, your, that kind of stuff, you know, like you need the, the sort of the physical items, right? There's office supplies, which would be like paper and ink for your printer. But then there's like the bigger ticket items, like the printer, that kind of thing. So office equipment, right? And again, you know, you notice there's furniture. So we're thinking office equipment, like printers, that stuff. Maybe, maybe you, you know, you're starting out, you need some things. So maybe it's like 300 bucks is what you're going to spend that year on that. And you need a desk and you find one, let's say at Target, and it's like 75 bucks, right? And office supplies, you need some paper, you need some stuff from Staples. Let's say in the end you spend, um, let's see. Yeah, about 180 bucks, you know, that first year and just like your basic paper, ink, things like that. Printing and stationery. Let's say you're going to, you know, let's say if you're a photo assistant, you're going to create some promo cards and mail them off to a bunch of photographers. Hey, hire me. Or you're a photographer and you're going to make, create a bunch of direct mail campaign and you're going to do it quarterly or you're going to send it off. Those would be two different figures, you know, a photo system would probably do this like a couple of times um, where in a, you know, or digital tech, whereas Printing and stationery for a, you know, photographer might be a more considerable expense. It could be four runs at $400 each. You know, we could be looking at 1200 bucks, right? At just printing and stationery to do some like, you know, direct mail. And then, you know, you need to go to the post office. So let's just plug in a figure there and say, you know, are we spending weekly $50 a week on the on postage? Probably not. I could bring that down. Or do you think you're going to be spending $24 a week to mail things out? You know, these are figures you'd have to look at, you know, depending if you're doing a, a print run of, you know, a hundred flyers out there um, at, you know, that's probably about 50 bucks or so for you to mail all that at, you know, 50 cents or so per stamp, um, could be more than that, depending upon all these factors. So these would be real figures that you'd be plugging in there based upon what's really happening in your life. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to plug in 12 here. I feel that's more comfortable of a number advertising and promotion. This would be if you, uh, maybe you're a, a retail photographer and you shoot portraits and things like that. And maybe you actually want to run an ad in your local 
paper or local magazine, that kind of thing. Um, that would be a place where anytime you're doing any kind of like actual advertising, that would be a place to put that now insurance. So you, you know, you might have like insurance that you have to pay. And I know I do. And I think it runs in the $800 a year category. Maybe it's a little higher than that. Yep. That's more like it. $75 a month. Okay. For my, my business insurance. And then we have interest, right? Well, interest, that would be, you know, that would be a figure you would pull from your, your bank statements. Okay. New photo equipment. Here's one that a lot of people are probably going to plug a number in. Um, so you'd have to kind of look at on average, like each year, what you spend in new photo equipment. Do you want a new camera every year? Do you want a new camera every two years, every three years? You know, how far are you going to be able to go with that particular camera? Photography equipment new, let's put in $3,000. Okay. Um, taxes, travel, non-reimbursed, you know, there's probably going to be a certain amount of monthly travel that you're going to be putting in. This would be like, let's say the gas that you spend to, to run other errands that aren't, um, trackable business miles. Let's say, let's say, you know, 50 per week on that. Okay. And equipment, maybe you fill your tank twice a week between commuting, um, some of its business and some of it, you know, these are figures you kind of got to tweeze out. This is kind of just giving us like a ballpark is what we're, what we're after here. Um, equipment maintenance, maybe you have a Canon camera, let's say, and you need Canon professional services. So you need to budget a certain amount of money, uh, to pay for, you know, Canon professional services. I forget what it is like $250, something like that. So, you know, if we're looking at like yeah, about $20 per month, right? And then business entertainment, that would be like if you're meeting with people, getting coffee, that sort of thing, you could plug a figure in there if you wanted. Um, having some amount of business savings is a good idea too, you know, trying to squirrel away some money in your business um, for sort of unseen things. Or if you want to be able to like, let's say, you know, rent a studio, being able to kind of save money in the business to be able to do that. It's not a bad idea. Okay. All right. So we get down here. Oh, we got our website and, um, you know, whatever that website hosting might be, let's say it's $150 a year. Okay. And maybe you have a Squarespace site or something like that. This is this video is not sponsored by Squarespace, but let's say that's a popular product. So you got your web host and you've got, um, you know, your web product. And so maybe it's more like $300 a year. Okay. Total. And this area here where it says personal. Okay. That's where we're going to plug in our figure from our other spreadsheet. So I need to go and get my other spreadsheet down here and look at that again. It says 3683. Okay. And we'll just round down 3683 is what I need to make personally, based upon this spreadsheet, 3683. So we're going to plug that in here, 3683, right? Now, this is this is the meat and potatoes of this, you guys. Shooting days, this is billable days. This is how many days you think you'll be working. So let's say you're a photo assistant, you're going to charge, I don't know, $300 a day, $400 a day um, in your market area. Uh, you've done a little research. You've talked to other people doing this. You say, hey, what's the going rate? That's what Jimmy should have done. He should have called other people that he has worked with and said, what is the going rate for my skill set here as a second or third assistant? And they would say, oh, probably in this range, right? So the photographers should be talking to each other about this kind of stuff more, right? And not undercutting people, right? So shooting days. So let's say, you know, Jimmy realizes like, oh, he's working like, you know, th on average three days out of the week, right? So you plug this three in here and it does this calculation. And if Jimmy, based upon these figures, if he's working three days per week, right? Uh, billable days, the minimum amount he should be charging is right here. 383.78. That's the minimum amount he should be charging in order to pay himself as well as keep his website alive, be able to buy a camera, um, be able to pay for a cell phone, all the business stuff that's involved in this, right? So let's say it's less than that. Maybe, maybe, you know, Jimmy's like, wow, not working that much. And he's only like doing a billable day once a week. Well, if that's the case, if, if for sure, well, then Jimmy needs to work more because as an assistant, he's probably not going to be able to uh, command $1,100 a day as a photo assistant, right? So he needs to increase the amount of, of work that he's getting. So let's say you're working five days a week. Well, five days a week, the minimum amount should be 
to 30. Now, this isn't what you would charge. This is the minimum amount. This is as low as you could possibly go. If you're actually doing billable days five days a week the whole year, right? That's 52 weeks out of the year, right? You're working five days a week. Well, the minimum amount that you would need to be getting paid is $230, right? But then that's a day rate, $230 per day. But the reality is, is not all the photographers out there are really, you know, working billable days, five days a week, 52 weeks out of the year. So again, this is an important set of spreadsheets to revisit, you know, every handful of months to come back and plug in real figures, to track this kind of information, to track how many days. I literally write this in a calendar and the information goes in my calendar, you know, the days that I'm working, right? And billable days with such and such client. I can print that count. I can blank everything else out other than like the work that I did on the calendar. I can print them all out and I can spread them out on my floor and I can kind of see a pattern. I can say, ah, oh, this is generally when I'm busy with this client. This is generally when I'm busy with this client. And I can count up all the days and divide by the you know total amount of days in the year. And I can see kind of my average amount of billable days that I'm working to get an idea as to, well, how often am I really doing what I do? And, you know, if that figure is more like oh, on average, you know, let's say on average two day, two billable days a week, your minimum amount you should be charging is 575. Okay. And it's from there that you look at the scope of the project, you look at the kind of usage they're looking for. So if you're an influencer out there and you have some company that wants you to go to some sort of shoot, it's really important for you to know, well, how long is it going to take you to do the shoot? You should be experienced enough with what you're doing to know how long it's going to take you from the point at which you accept the job, right? Even counting in a few of those emails, maybe in your time, maybe it's a total of an hour of your total time with some of that, you know, correspondence, you go and do the shoot. Maybe there's some setup. Maybe you got to do some fashion shoot. There's some wardrobe involved. Um, maybe you're, you know, pulling that together or the company's sending that to you. Um, so you got to kind of organize that there's time that goes into all this stuff, you guys. And then you have to hire some models, right? And there's some time that goes into that. Even if it's like some friends you're pulling into the shoot. Okay. And then you get out there and you do the shoot and maybe the shoot goes like half the day. Maybe it's like three and a half, four hours, right? Well, there's not a lot you can do with the rest of your day. If, if you're committing yourself to a half day doing something else, right? So there you go. You got like half a day spent on that. And then, then you got to edit the images and deliver them. So maybe there's another half a day, maybe even a whole day of dealing with the hundreds of images you shot on that shoot. Okay. So if you're giving it away for free, you're losing out and you're not even able to, you're not, a, not able to pay yourself. You're not able to pay your business. You're not able to stay in business if you're giving this stuff away for free. And so after I talked with old Jimmy, he, he understood and I told him, go back to the base fee and personal expense calculators, go and plug your numbers in again and be real about it. You know, this is important stuff for you to understand. What's the minimum amount of money that I should be charging minimum to be able to stay in business and also pay myself. So if you like this video, hit the like sign. If you didn't, you know what to do. You can leave comments down below. If you'd like, I'll get back to you. Hit that subscribe, hit that little bell. Thanks for watching. Hope this was useful to some of you out there. Have a great day.